Hi, I'm Vitold and I'm here to tell you which of the top gaming chairs right now on the market actually do make sense. I've selected the ones that are scored the highest or if I was in any doubt I was going for the most expensive ones. And here we've got Noble Chairs Epic in real Nappa leather. Here we've got DX Racer Formula. This is the Hyped Secret Labs Titan in one of the base versions and I'm going to put them into bases and match them against an electric 7G11 from Power Seats with electric adjustment in 18 weights. So let's see how it goes. One thing that I need to tell you is that I'm personally involved with Power Seats. So this 7G11 is my chair right now. So I'm going to do my best to stay as neutral as possible. As you will see, it's not gonna be that easy. So I'll mostly be focusing on showing you where the differences are and you will see for yourself. It's not a gaming chair. Let's not call it a gaming chair, whatever that means to you. You may call it a robot chair, a super crazy chair or a BMW 7 Series uh, comfort pack um, seat, if that's any clue for you. Gaming chairs are still super crazy popular. People really like them. They look really cool. There's thousands of reviews on Amazon. These are not exactly cheap, but we might, I think, call them the top of the line. They kind of resemble a bucket seat of a sports car. And some owners even say that they've rediscovered what comfort means. So I'm here to find out. And there's a reason I'm actually sitting right now on DX Racer Formula, but that's gonna be for a second later. About the 7G11, that's completely something else. This is top of the line. That's top of the top that you can get today, also price-wise. So I'm interested how close these three guys are to something that's like absolutely top and crazy. These guys are not actually cheap. It's like between 300 and 700 uh, uh, euros or dollars right now. So this is not exactly something that you would call cheap. You would just, you know, buy a few just to stack in your room. So no, it still needs to be a conscious choice. So let's find out starting off with Noble Chairs Epic. So what are the first impressions of sitting on Noble Chairs Epic? These are, by the way, not my first impressions. I've spent some time on every single one of those chairs. But in this particular case, the first impressions actually stay forever. And they are like sitting on a wooden board. It is so bloody hard, first of all. The difference is that, well, levels of comfort on a hardwood floor might actually be higher if you lay down flat, because here, after sitting on this thing, you will probably end up with lower back pain because this thing, what, no matter how you sit, is going to make you slouch, which it is even right now with pillow or without pillow, no matter how you sit up, there is no real lumbar support. There is, however, a lovely pillow with a strap so that you can actually move it up and down. I'm not gonna do it now, but this is, this is kind of ridiculous because this thing is so hard well, it feels soft. It looks soft if you squeeze it. But imagine that this whole area is being pressed by your back. So this whole thing is making you basically not touch the backrest anywhere. If you've got no pillow, this is how you sit. Huh? This is not really how you want to look on Zoom. So what you do is the only points that I'm now touching the backrest with is somewhere here, like this place and this place behind my shoulder. So I'm adding a pillow, and now, uh, instead of three attach points, one, two, and this backrest pillow, whatever you call it, lumbar support, now you've got two touch points. I'm only touching the chair now here, where this lumbar support thing is, and here where the pillow is. So why buy a chair? So this is a complete disaster in terms of ergonomics, and I, I don't think anybody should actually be using this thing. But it looks pretty cool. I've got to, I've got to give it that. It looks pretty nice it looks decent and it feels light actually all of these gaming chairs feel light they are light they're like 20 25 kilograms the packaging that they come in is 30 to 35 kilograms 35 for the secret lab so yeah that's that's pretty easy to move around that's a plus so on this seat i'm able to survive for let's say one hour then when i stand up first thing i feel is that my butt tells me thank you <laughs> That's, that's true. And the second thing I feel is that my back is really not happy. So now there's time for another test. I'm going to place this chair more in the middle and I'm going to ask you, what do you think is wrong with this chair? So you can't see it right now, but it's bent. So the surface, the flat surface, the seat is not even. This part is lower, closer to the ground than this. So you sit like this. And I'm pretty sure I did assemble it correctly. It's actually no way to assemble it not correctly so that's all good so it must be bent somewhere so either the mechanism here is bent 
or what is more likely probably the frame that's inside is bent somewhere and that's not really the best um, outcome that you might be hoping for when you buy a chair that's actually the most expensive even more expensive than the titan secret lab because this one costs around 700 dollars that's a lot and yeah see i feel this this part is lower than this part not good it's wide enough the side bolsters are far enough to the sides not to restrict your movement so you can you can move your legs you can spread your legs if you like it's pretty short which you probably can see by the gap um let's say okay that's how i would be sitting um having still this much space here not really the best support but that's fine you've got the handbrake here which allows you to move the backrest to tilt it more or less so that's pretty standard this mechanism this element is <laughs> it's actually the same in all of these gaming chairs looks like it's coming from the same factory it might be or the same manufacturers the same assembly line same with all this this whole mount that's connecting the seat with the backrest so the way you sit on this chair is that you are having its seat kind of tilted backwards yeah so your knees are higher than your bum and so on and what, what you can do with it is you can tilt it even more back <laughs> oh that's the that's the way you do it so let's put that back it's not really attached in any way you just stick it there but you can let's try you can lock it you can leave it kind of open to be able to continuously play with it that's not always how you want to sit that's not exactly how i want or would like to sit but if you sit like this you might at some point think that you might want to have a footrest which i happen to have but this is not exactly the idea if you would like to have it leveled with the floor the stench of this thing is just terrible it's everywhere and i'm pretty sure this is not a smell a beautiful smell of leather but a stench of some rubber thing i don't know which part exactly is smelling that bad but that's really really not cool and it's freaking everywhere so if you're still able to to walk straight after getting up from this chair you will have to bend anyways to vomit so all bases are covered and then visually i haven't noticed any flaws everything is fine everything actually works in this one you see and you, you may feel that they are pretty cheap but yeah that that's that's how they come and they actually look pretty much the same when you look at the details all this this, this mechanism, the handbrake, the tilt mechanism down there, they're all the same. Maybe not exactly the same with some little details, but you see the same assembly line, the same factory or the same manufacturing process, which is, I guess, okay. The good thing about Noble Chairs Epic is that you won't feel any frame element anywhere here, but that's because it's so freaking damn hard. So in this chair, the side bolsters here and those elements right here are not coming in your way they are not really restricting your movements which is good you might a little bit feel if you're as huge as i am or even bigger you might feel them somewhere here but that's not a big deal so they are basically responsible for design and that's really good and you will see why when i hop on this dx racer formula and then you'll see why that matters why this is good this way now the headrest without the pillow is making it pretty much impossible to sit on without choking yourself to death. So you need that pillow here oh, to be able to breathe again. The adjustment aside from the backrest tilt and the whole chair tilt consists also of height adjustment, which right now is not working because I'm having, I'm having it at the lowest position possible. I'm 183 centimeters tall and this is the highest. Obviously, I need to have it this way so anybody who's below 180 might have a little bit of a problem here one thing about the seat is that it's rather short it's generating a bit of pressure here that's why i'm having it so low it's actually okay for me uh, at this height but there is a bit of pressure once you sit on it for a longer period of time so it being short actually might be a good thing because if it was longer and still going you know up that way it would generate a lot of pressure right here and that's not really good for your legs so it's probably good as it is what you can do here is you can move armors forward backward i like to have them backward as much as possible you can also move them to the sides like this boom and also there is height adjustment which works all good but the thing is what what doesn't shoot me is that i cannot move them back because then sitting at a desk that's where i have to have a desk to be able to keep my arms straight around 90 degree angle like this so then for me to reach the keyboard or the mouse you know i need to move a little bit forward so that's contributing even more to me slouching and well obviously that's not the best way 
of having it. So again, the pillow comes into play. And again, you basically don't need a chair. That's how you sit. I'm not sure if you see it, it's, it's so much up. I can squeeze it, but obviously that hurts. <laughs> I mean, not literally hurts, but that's of course not how you can sit. So the pillow doesn't make sense. This lumbar support pillow, yeah, it's freaking useless in this case. I don't know why they keep doing that. It should be illegal. At some point you may feel that they are a little bit too close to you anyway, even if you push them aside, which I am doing. See, I'm kind of like right there. And there is a fix to that. There are bolts here which you might loosen and move the whole mount out, which is a very smart and good idea. That's actually useful. The problem with them, the thing that I don't like, and you probably won't like it too, is just that this is, this is, this is cheap crap. It looks like plastic. It a lot of times feels like plastic. It's some kind of foamy thing, maybe. Not much padding there, if any. So this is not a pleasant experience to, to use. Uh, those uh, armrests and we know from some other examples that this can be done better so the conclusion is that all that i just told you doesn't matter at all because these things this noble chairs epic is unacceptable to sit on i don't even know how people keep sitting on them this this is not even doing well the only thing that it was supposed to do which is let you sit in acceptable comfort without harming your body and this is it and the thing is that it doesn't have to be this way with the gaming chairs because some of them like dx racer formula can actually be pretty pleasant to sit on so moving from the terrible terrible noble chairs epic oh this is like finding a woman of your life that during the first night turns out to be a man <laughs> but seriously this is at the moment, this is so much better and so much more pleasant and enjoyable to sit on because of the padding, which is here in the first place. Like here is nothing. You can't do anything to this thing. This is a rock. The padding leaves huge gaps on the sides that you could stick your head into. Yeah, I know this is, this is not head, just a hand, but this is actually something that you can stay sitting on. So for the lowest price out of these three and basically half the price of this thing this starts off encouraging but that's the beginning so the first issue appears when you want to sit at the desk and you realize how far forward the armists are so if you want to do anything at the desk you've got to be that much away from the desk which is obviously not good there's nothing you can do with these guys you can only adjust their height you cannot move them back which is something i would like to do you can loosen the bolts here move them further to the sides but you can't move them back which is for me a problem because them being a mile ahead of you makes you move your arms forward to do anything yeah realistically here and that's already look what happens my shoulders stop touching the backrest and they start rounding so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna look like this guy who's only working chest, which mostly is true. No, it's not, but, but that's not how you want to sit. So this is okay if you sit like this, that's maybe you can survive, but the armrests are a problem here. And this is followed by an issue that's actually contributing to that feeling, and which is because of those parts here, whatever we call them, that are too narrow for my shoulders of Captain America, and they push them forward. So again, I'm getting those rounded shoulders again. This is as if they wanted me to do that. Now, obviously that's not good. That's not how you want to sit. You would like to sit straight with your shoulder blades together. Maybe not exactly like that. That's also unnatural, but you would like to feel at least natural and, and neutral. Maybe that's a better word to use here. Yeah, I'm still bad happy though. So it's nice to sit on, especially after experiencing that thing, which after a few minutes is getting uncomfortable. So this is acceptable here, but we're starting to get some problems in this spot. So in DX Racer formula, my back is fully connected to the backrest, which is good, it's fully supported, but there's a head and neck problem. If I take off the pillow, it's kind of weird because until this part, I'm kind of rounded forward. And then in the upper part, I need to go back to get and use the header. So then here comes the solution, the pillow, you install it in a very easy way. It may support your neck or it may support your head, which is probably more reasonable. And it is as hard and as bumpy, as pumped as Pamela Anderson's, you know what? So that's, that's not a pleasant experience. 
that one in the noble chairs was more pleasant, more, more plush, more soft and more enjoyable. This is covered in this leather kind of thing material. This is not leather, by the way, but this is like you feel it you, and, and you feel something is wrong with it. It's just so look, I'm going to crash that school. No, I'm going to crash you. This thing uh, makes you slouch forward again. So this part is making your back rounded in the lumbar area, which in the beginning feels nice, but after some time, you're dead. Your back is dead. So the conclusion about th this setup is that it makes you slouch in two places. First here with your back, and then this setup of, I mean, those areas, those elements here, along with armrests, make you slouch, I mean, make you round your shoulders, which generates us two problems out of which only one was actually present here, which was the back problem. There was no shoulders problem. So here, in the end of the day, despite it being soft and pretty pleasant in the beginning to sit on, you're having two posture issues. This is a... I know how it sounds, but this is really not good. So there's no other way to put it. You're getting the same handbrake here, which is just having a different kind of plastic on it, different to noble chairs. Actually, it's probably not designed in the right way because if I want to use my whole hand like this, my finger gets stuck here. So the parts are too close to each other. Ah, Christopani Naidrosu, that was my native language popping out in panic. <laughs> okay, yeah, so this, this is not the stuck, not the best execution. And there are some quality issues. So first of all, this is not probably a quality issue, but it doesn't give you this nice feeling when you see that this is this whole thing is moving. Another thing is that one of those parts, this one or this one is having too much plastic inside. It's like they didn't cut it properly. So you've got to either cut it yourself or squeeze it in. There are huge gaps and you can see that from the back, you can stick your fingers here. And this is not really a big problem. You're paying half, but we know that it can be done better. Here in the noble chest, there's no, it, nothing, no, no gaps. It's sitting tight, so it can be done well, another thing is the base, I'm going to move that one further, is the base which is made of some interesting material. I don't know if it's metal, I don't think it's metal because it's not cold and it's, it sounds like some kind of plastic, some something, a similar thing that the wheels are made out of. It holds, it's fine, but I think I'm preferring the metal pieces like those. One more extra thing which is probably better to show you is that if you see this part here, some little hands that were assembling or packing this chair, the factory left something that looks like blood. Not really a fan of that kind of additions. Definitely this material that it's made out of is, is more pleasant than so-called real leather in Noble Chess Epic. It's smoother, it's more, it's, it's making a nicer, Jesus. It's making a nicer impression overall. So I would say that the experience, like visual and touch-wise, is better on the VX Racer formula comparing to Noble Chairs Epic. This is just too hard and there's this pattern. Let me show you a very strong pattern. Some older cars used to have it. New Mercedes cars also have it. I'm more of a fan of what this one is having, the smoothness except for the blood, obviously, but this is just something that feels more premium, if I can <laughs> use that word. What you can do with this thing is you can pull this out and you can tilt it. You can only lock it in the initial position, so you can play with this kind of motion. You can also adjust how hard it is. There's a knob here. You can adjust how hard it is. Oh, to, oh now it's easy. <laughs> you feel the difference. Okay, so if you're into that, it's here. I am not into that. You cannot lock it in this position, so you won't be having issues with the pressure. But if you see again, yeah, my, my, my legs would like to go down because the seat is again like this. And again, you cannot do anything about it. I feel pressure here. The seat is even shorter than the noble chairs. You see there's much more space here. I'm moved. I'm already moved fully back. So basically, this is what you're left with in terms of adjustment and one more thing obviously which could help for the pressure here is height and yeah now there's no pressure it is a bit too low i couldn't sit like this but this is the only solution 
at least it goes lower than that. So the, the lift and the mechanism allow it to go lower than noble, chair, noble, chair, noble chairs. I still would prefer to have it up because the general feel the even the energy flow is different if you're sitting higher. In my case, the position is better. I would prefer it this way. The pressure here is not that terrible. And let's keep in mind that this is still softer. So it won't be such a big issue if, if that's an issue for you in the first place. Yeah, but keep in mind that you're sitting like this. It's not like an office chair that you can play with it and you have got rounded, or at least they should, at least a little bit half this front part of the seat rounded forward so that this pressure is lower. And about this time, which is how long the video has uh, taken me sitting on this thing, is what is required for your back to tell you, oh bro, something is wrong. There's this pulling sensation that you start feeling. And so you reach out for a pillow, because that's what you should do in such a situation. You should adjust your lumbar. Um, and here's the pillow with a nice DX Racer logo on it. So yeah, you can attach it so that it moves up and down nicely. I'm not gonna do it now because because it's not gonna stay here. <laughs> because this thing again, like this, is so hard that, well, it's nothing except for lumbar support now. There's, there's no backrest, there's no chair, it's just lumbar. Um, <laughs> so, if you would like to sit without the pillow, uh, the, the headrest pillow, well, it's, it's also impossible because you are stretched back in your lumbar area like a bloody pole dancer and that's not how you can sit. So you're taking this thing back and now the only two uh, touch points, ah, maybe if I would squeeze the thing down a bit further, maybe if I could you know, go back, generate more pressure, put it lower. Yeah, I, I do have, I do touch those things now that were bothering me before, but <laughs> this is not looking encouraging, I assume, to you guys, so I'm very sorry. Oh, see, that that's how I was pushing against the lumbar pillow. It's just the combination that doesn't work. So you're not able to use this thing. You throw it away and then again, you try to sit back slouching. I'm exaggerating a little bit now, but this is how I normally would sit. If you see me this way, do you see me well? I am slouching forward, my shoulders are rounded. I cannot even round them more, much more forward. It's already the top of what I can do wrong with, with my body in those areas. I think it says most of it. The side bolsters here on the seat, actually you can feel the frame here in them, just like you can feel the frame. There's a bar here and there's a bar here. I could pretty much, like, if you see that, I can grab this bar, it's pure metal inside. Not the nicest, but this is at least, well, if you don't squeeze it like I do, which you normally don't, so it's not a problem, you feel some padding, which is nicer. So the side bolsters are a little bit tighter than in the noble chairs. But still, you can move your legs, it's okay. You're not losing uh, blood circulation in this area, which, you know, matters, is, uh, especially when you're young. But that's a no. This thing is still, it's still too wrong in some areas to actually sit on. It feels nice for 10 seconds, but then the, the curvature of this thing is just killing your back again. So don't get it for your kids. I wouldn't do that, even though I don't have kids. So out of these two chairs, that formula actually feels better as it does at least one thing well. It is not as hard as a rock. In both of them, you will have your back screwed. So it doesn't really matter. This one at least does this well. But I cannot say that I could recommend to anybody sitting in this sort of position. It feels nice for 10 seconds, but then you are screwed. If you'd like to have it as furniture, it's okay. It looks nice, it feels nice, except for the blood right there or whatever that is, ketchup. You shouldn't probably sit more in it than 10 seconds. I already feel hurt. I should be probably airlifted to the hospital. And let's remember that some of us sit eight or even more hours at the desk at work, so we better not kill ourselves. Not the best recommendation in here anyway. Let's try this baby. Actually, I sat on the Secret Lab Titan EVO 2022 already for a few days, so it's not gonna be me trying it. But for you to know, guys, and not worry, I already have three more gaming chairs ordered that are coming. It's the famous Razer Iskur, that's the way you're pronouncing it. It's Corsair T3 and Anda Seat Kaiser. So we are continuing this battle, and after that, I'm going to get four very serious 
office chairs, I mean proper office chairs, two out of which are going to be more expensive than the three of those together. I mean, not those two together, but every single one of those two is going to be more expensive than all of these. I'm talking about Herman Miller and two bonus office chairs. So that's going to be interesting. Stay tuned for that as well. Now let's move to the Secret Lab Titan Evo 2022 from Secret Lab's Secret Lab with this magnetic pillow, which works. Not anymore. Okay, just need to, this is stuck. Hi, right, let's see when it drops, it drops somewhere here. Okay, not for short people. This is the base version, the normal size, not the XL. However, it is already considerably bigger than each of those. So now the Gladiator, the Conqueror, the Titan, and the gaming chair that's known as the best gaming chair in the world. And it's called so by the biggest celebrities in the world, totally for free. And I can already tell you that I can confirm that customer support is really good with these things. I wish that there was no need for customer support after purchase in the first place, but we'll get to that. So big time, I still remember my first impressions, which are that, oh, this thing is bloody hard. Generally, it feels just as unsophisticated as these two. However, after some time of sitting on it, we realize that it is softer and more springy, let's call it, than Noble Chair's Epic in terms of the seat. Because that's the first thing you, 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 you realize. Then the backrest comes. But at the same time, it is still not going to be as soft and nice in this case, in, in, in terms of my preferences, as the DX Racer formula. So your butt might get sore, but not immediately like in that one and that stays. But after, let's say, one hour of sitting and then you might be still sitting. That's actually better than I thought it would be. You might start feeling it after you stand up and you're like, oh, your butt says thank you. Thank you for letting all that pressure go. This is really feeling very hard in the beginning, but it's not as bad. Somehow it works. Maybe it even is memory foam out there inside. I don't know that, but it feels very hard, but somehow, somehow adapts to your little bum. I would say that it is confusing enough not to be able to give a clear verdict in the beginning. You cannot say it's enjoyable, but I can survive on it and, and not feel like I'm kicked in the butt by somebody in a motorcycle boot. I would say that's that's still a good start. My Titan Evo turned out to be a sort of a crybaby because it came with a broken armor's button or whatever that thing is that should be stuck here and should allow you to do exactly this thing. So move it out and in. Now I have to touch it, press it. Yeah, it does work but then I need to keep it. So I'm going to use the X-Racer as help. It came with a scratched armrest right here. The tilt mechanism is banged up. So somebody was using it. They damaged the paint in a few spots and now I got this. Also the base, the metal base in this case, came with some additional paint stuck somewhere. Actually pretty sharp thing. If you're not wearing gloves, be careful because that can nicely catch you. So it turns out that Likely somebody was using this chair before me and they returned it. And that got me thinking why people choose this chair in the first place. And one of the reasons why people choose them is a very good reason because this thing actually has lumbar support. This knob and this knob allow you to push this lumbar support. It's pretty much somewhere in this area. It's a pretty big flat spot that's moving, but you actually feel it moving. And the way I like it, I actually like it not very much pushed forward. That's how it suits me. And I have it in the lowest spot or like a little bit higher. This is a good thing because first of all, the curvature of this chair is immediately better than either of these. That's a fact. That's, that's, I mean, that's a fact for my body at least. And I assume for, for many people's bodies as well. So you actually can sit in it pretty normally. Okay, you cannot sit without the headrest <laughs> pillow. <laughs> But there is this headrest pillow, so, so it counts. This way you can see there's just a little gap here between the pillow and my shoulder blades, like top of them, my, my, uh, this triangular muscle here. So it is okay, you can use it and it's gonna not hurt your back. I cannot say it's enjoyable, but I can survive and sit in it. And that's actually good. So here we definitely have a winner in terms of backrest. You need to really work with it to feel the difference, which actually doesn't matter because the end result matters. It doesn't matter how long you need to play with it. But the way I like it, 
with my pretty standard, despite being extremely athletic body, with my standard normal body, one meter 83 centimeters tall, that's six feet tall, exactly almost, I can sit in this thing and I cannot sit in those. The seat is also a little bit this way tilted backwards. So your, your knees will be higher, maybe not exactly, but this part of the chair is higher than this part of the chair, which might possibly generate some discomfort. However, I'm having it as low as possible. So yeah, see, I'm just, and this is the standard Titan. So, oh, that's violent. Be careful doing that. You cannot really do much about that. You can make the whole thing tilt. You can lock it. Like my heels are off the floor, yeah, this way. So it depends how you like it. I'm not doing that, so I'm gonna keep it flat, mostly. There's a handbrake here. This goes pretty easily the way you want it. What I noticed and what is uh, going to contribute to me saying a next sentence after I'm done with this sentence is that there is, even though the chair is locked, yeah, now it's unlocked, I'm going fully forward, I'm locking it, it's, it's not moving back, look. This is a pretty loose motion. Okay. So they all have it. And somehow in the secret lab, maybe it's high expectations or something else. In the secret lab, you feel it the most. I feel it the most. I notice it the mo most. Definitely the, the movement is the largest out of the three there. And that's a bit of a disappointment, not how it should be. But them all having this problem is making me think that this is because of the tilt mechanism, which is not exactly very tight. Now that big statement that I was saying is coming about the, the Titan Evo 2022, and it's that, well, in my opinion, there's, there's nothing plush or exciting about this chair. It's what is fun, I've got to give it to them, is that there are so many different trims, so many ways of customizing it in terms of looks, in this case, that it's fun. You might have fun if you're really determined to have a, a gaming chair instead of a proper office chair, maybe for whatever reasons, for price reasons or, or any other style, or you just, you just want it this way. This probably is an acceptable choice, but this is, this is not something like you will be waiting to sit in it and taking a peek into that direction, it is possible. Okay, so what about the seat base? Because this is something worth mentioning because the seat base here is much longer in the, than in those. It's like, mm, maybe if I sit like this, how, how would I sit like this? It is two fingers of space between my, my calf, my, my leg and, and the, um, where the seat is ending. That's good. That's good because it supports me well and the pressure here is not that terrible. This is something I, I don't think you should even be worried about that. I would say this is really good. This goes in pair with the side bolsters, which are really minimal here. It depends if you like it or not. This is a good part here. If you want to sit like an ass and that's not the way you should be sitting. So it, it's not an ergonomic position to sit and do something with your legs. Even, even this, it, it's putting some additional strain on your back, but here you can do it. Nothing is restricting my movements in the shoulders area. Unless you're a Hulk, you won't have an issue with that. So that's, that's good. It's, it's pretty neutral as a whole because of that. Then come the armrests, which I think also are, I mean, I'm pretty sure they are better than either of these two. First of all, you can move them forward backward, which you, which you cannot do here. You can also play with them and have them like this if you want to do whatever you want to do. I don't think that's useful in any way, but I see some chests have it. Um, you can lift them, you can lower them. And there's one more thing that you can do. Like a noble chest, you can move them further away. And I mean, it's this one, this one without an additional button, which is right here, is not gonna move anywhere. You can also manually move them here so that they start off from another position. This is the same, the handbrake, but there's nothing obstructing the way. One thing that's good that I like is that these guys are softer. This is also some kind of foamy thing out there. What's fun, I'm not sure if you can see that because even I cannot see it now, but sometimes when you look at them, there are like little sparks or sparkles, whatever you call those things. It's getting a little bit shiny, which gives a nice and let me say it even premium feel to that point. So this is a good part up to this point, because then when you want to sit at the desk, 
Look how far forward these guys are. So I would have to have my desk here. That means my hands need to be there to reach the keyboard. See what happens. To reach the keyboard, first of all, I need to have them lifted to be able to work like this. Second of all, either it's my arms problem and they are not long enough to comfortably reach the table down there, let's say here, but this is where the problem starts. And again, like in both of these two, I wish I was able to move them further back and I cannot. And this is really actually a problem for me. I've been sitting on this chair a lot. I wasn't able to survive on either of these two for a long time, but on this one I was able to. And this was the only thing that was actually really bothering me because I would have to lower these guys, jump, like slide under my desk to have it somewhere here like I normally would have. Maybe I could raise them a little bit and my desk is pretty thin. You see it right there, both of them. So I could rest my elbows here in this area. Yeah, I wished that they were longer so that I could actually rest further back, but let's say that's, this is not a big, big deal for me to move them like this. And I would have to have a keyboard here on top. That's not the way you should be sitting, generally. You should be sitting more comfortably, which I am able to do with these. So I know it's possible, and also some other chairs which you don't see uh, yet, but the proper office chairs. So it's not a full success yet here in this field. And so, because of the fact that I'm generally working at the desk, I work with a computer every day, and that's how I was spending time on this Titan, um, I was, in the end, the most comfortable doing nothing. So not really working. <laughs> Sitting in this position with my arms crossed, with the lumbar support the way it suits me, and with my, with my head against the pillow. However, after some time, I would anyway find it a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more natural to go a little bit forward. And that was a sign for me that after some time, your body naturally gets into the position that it thinks it should be in. And then I was investigating, I was playing with the lumbar support, I was playing a little bit with height, and every single time, after some time, also, re also regardless of how I would place my arms and how I would like to work, I was ending up with the space here between my neck or head in this spot and, and the pillow. It's, it's like, it's a little bit too far backwards. And the thing is you can't do anything about this because it's not adjustable in any way. Neither the shoulder area, neither the headrest itself. That's all you've got. Without it, yeah, you cannot sit without this. Uh, it's, it's, this, is, this is impossible. I, I don't even know how to describe it, but it's impossible. It's just too far back. I was not exactly super happy, but definitely able to survive is now a new definition of good. Still, after some time, I would get, I would start feeling that pulling sensation in my, in my lower back. I think it's because of the head thing. Everything that's above my belt is not exactly aligned. And that's a bit of a pity because, well, the pillow is nice. You know, it's, it's definitely the nicest out of them all. It also feels like there's some... Um, some idea behind it, this magnetic attachment, the way that it moves, it's not jumping forward like, like Pamela Anderson here, and that pillow, it's softer, it actually might be pleasant to use if you force it, but it's not there yet. I, I am happy that they, they spent time, they cared about those details, this is really cool, look, you can have fun, and I saw people having fun with it. Freaking works, that's cool. You come, you've got your friends, your other 16 year, old, year olds, Okay, you do, you've got to do it the proper way. Yeah, why not? Come on, why not? Okay, upside down. <laughs> so in general, it's the biggest and the most neutral out of these. It's not bad, but it's not exactly good yet. And considering what kind of huge celebrities are losing their minds over it and how much hype in general there is about this uh, chair, especially the 2022 version, I might be a little bit disappointed. It is better thought out, I've got to give them that, but this is not yet something that you would be like, wow about, and this is something that I would, I just, I'm just waiting to, to sit on. You know, I was expecting something actually comfortable and encouraging. I would say that this is still on the border of surviving and, you know, rolling down to hell. Whatever I'm going to tell you um, from now on, take it with uh, an extra grain of salt, because, it's just impossible for me to, you know, but it truly is impossible. Yeah, still, again, what I'm, what am I going to tell you now, take it with a grain of salt, even though this thing is you know, awesome. It's, it just is awesome. You sit on it, 
and it's just a different thing. This is, this is something that you sit on and you feel relieved. Remember that I am associated with power seats. This is like, ah, and at the moment it's set up for me. This is here, that's, that's your control panel. You switch it on right here. And then you've got everything here moved electrically, except for armrests and let's say a part of the headrest. The whole backrest area here is adjustable. However, the first thing, except for it being plush, because it really is plush, jumping from this thing, our beautiful secret lab, let's keep them here, so that you remember what paint looks like. It feels really plush and it feels, supportive yeah you saw me i just went back there's a remedy to that boom i don't need to go back now if i didn't want the shoulder area to move forward there's another way we adjust the headrest manually like this but this thing is soft that's the first thing this is real nappa leather there's 18 way adjustment which is right here so starting off with the backers that's a normal thing that all of these have yeah like this forward back there's no way uh it's like it's not limited in any way if you want to go back another part is the shoulders area which you move separately with a button that's on top of the backers button and this already makes a difference this makes a huge difference actually because you can have your shoulders exactly in the position that you want to nothing is restricting your movement here so you can do whatever you want but if you actually want to be hugged by this chair there's a way because these bolsters, right now I'm not touching them, but using this button here, this switch, I can make them really tight. And that's in the process of happening right now. Okay, I'm touching them. Now they're squeezing me more. And what this does, it's actually kind of, I feel like it's lifting me up. So part of my body is not only resting on my bottom right there, but it's but it's being hugged here and kind of lifted like this. The same thing happens with the side bolsters, which here are a little bit more tight even than in the DX Racer. Please keep that in mind because in this chair, you won't really want to sit like this because it's kind of missing the point. But they are more tight and you might feel them here. I'm not having the biggest butt in the world and I feel them. So you've got to be uh, aware that this happens, but this is exactly making you sit like you should sit. Of course, you've got to adjust it to that spot. Yeah, so work with the, with the backrest. Boom, bolsters. Now they are a little bit too tight for me, so I'm gonna loosen them up. Another thing that you do, that you can do, is use this four-way circle, circular switch, which is your lumbar support. And you can push it forward in the middle part, which I'm doing now. You can kind of push it back, if you don't want it sticking out so much. You can push it down, which is pushing the lower part of it forward or even decide that you don't want that and you want it to be more in the upper part it's it's either it's either up middle part or down i like my lower part to be moved forward so that i'm not sliding back now moving down because this is where another part of the fun happens first of all yeah you've got electric adjustment that electric adjustment is on top of the lift that you can also adjust manually you cannot you don't have any levers here you cannot tilted back you're getting a few lifts and then you're left with this fluid up and down adjustment you can go pretty pretty far up with it it's also changing a little bit of an angle because it's going mostly with this rear part up and it's going yeah too high for me if that happens now i feel like i'm sliding forward this is something that you cannot get in any of these guys here so your knees not being you know crashed i'm also going to move this back so here I'm, I'm not having any support now. Yeah, they, they, they uh, I lift freely. Now these guys are a little bit too low for me. So I'm moving them manually, move them forward. And here I am, right? What happens now is that the chair is like this as opposed to these guys. But if you don't like it, you can move the front part of the seat up. So you're changing an angle. It's going to get like this. Yeah, I immediately feel more pressure. And since I now feel pressure because it's See, it's a bit too high for me. First of all, I should, I should have it lower now. But then, let's say I like to sit in the position like in these. I want to feel like in a sports car, race car. I can expand the front part of the seat. Pretty far. Now, <laughs> now there's no cap. So you can play with it the way you want. There's really almost no restrictions 
what you can do with this chair. Yeah, it's not too much forward for me. I'm gonna keep it, I usually keep it somewhere like this. I don't like it having like in the car. Boom, lower the armrests. One more thing for taller guys than I am or for shorter. This is electrically adjustable and now it's too high for me. That's one of the things you can do. Let's move it back so that you can see better. Another thing is the pillow. Oh yeah, keep in mind that this is much heavier than those guys. There's a lot of electronic stuff. What you can do with it, you can manually make it sort of whatever you call this, but it's wrapping around your head now. You can also move it forward. You can move it back. So there's a lot of stuff to play with. And one more thing. This thing really smells nicely and it's not a smell of me sitting on it, but this is real Napa leather. It's a smooth leather. Let me show you up close. Hope you can see that. Let's focus on it. Yes. So you've got some pattern here. This is all made out of leather, wrapped in leather. This is all soft here. If you look at the bottom part, there is padding. There are cushions here. This is all soft. And then every time you sit back in it, especially after these things, it's like having a match with young Jennifer Lopez on Tinder. You just can't believe how lucky you are. It makes you want to pretty much slip in this thing. And of course, I'm getting a little bit far with that, but this is just the top of the top thing. There's nothing above it. It's if you want to have the best of the best and the most customizable seat, the office chair, whatever you call it in the world, this is the thing. Every single part of it almost is electrically adjustable somewhere manually, but you can do whatever you want with these. See, the armrests can be moved forward if you want that. Yeah, they are now basically like in those. A little bit more back, but what you can do is you can move them that far back. And now I can actually sit with my back normally positioned and I can rest my elbows on the armrests. Here in the back, you're having a charging spot for it. There's a battery inside there. You access it from this spot. One thing about this chair is that it is heavier than those. So when you want to move, you feel its weight. It is heavier than these little uh, chairs. That's the, the thing that you will feel. But the whole idea of it is to allow you to make your own private personal nest with it. So that no matter what body type you are, you should, and the idea is for you to find your place and your way of sitting in this thing. That's how the idea was born actually. So that the largest number of people can benefit from all the customization, from all the adjustment that is otherwise not available in these things. But if you want to have something that's different, something that gives you even more than you can get in a regular shop, this is it. If you can spend $8,000 on a watch that you wear every day or on a single option in a car that makes your life more enjoyable or more comfortable or on a purse that you wear or you carry every day, then I think investing the same in an office chair that you spend many hours per day possibly, also every day, is a no-brainer. So to see all the details, go to powerseats.eu. I'm wishing you all the best and stay tuned.